All right. Um, I think that we have a quorum, so we are going to go ahead and get started. Thank you to everybody who uh, made time today to join. Um, I know we have folks from all over the world, so really, really appreciate uh, the time and whatever time it is uh, where you're joining from. Uh, so with that, I am going to kick things over to um, Hannah, who will uh, get us started here. Um, Hannah, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thanks, Derek. All right, hey, hi everybody. Uh, welcome to the Robocorp open source RPA webinar series. So today we're gonna share some background on open source RPA and discuss the benefits of using cloud platform to run a workforce of robots in the cloud. So we've launched our, our cloud service officially last week and we're super excited to demo that for you today. Uh, if you have any questions throughout this uh, presentation, you can ask them right in Zoom using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your window. My colleagues, uh, Derek and Patrick are on the line. They will field questions and try to respond. And we also have some time reserved at the end for a brief Q&A session. So um, my name is Hanna Kestunen. I'm the head of product here and I'm with Antti Karjalainen, our co-founder and CEO. Um, we're in Finland today, but we have employees globally, including US. And we're a well-funded startup backed by the legendary folks at Benchmark. Um, we've chosen Benchmark as our partner because of the rich history in investing in open source projects. So um, Antti, why don't you start with setting the background for open source RPA and how Robocorp is approaching this scene. Okay, thank you, Anna. So if you're really new to RPA or robotic process automation, here's really the, the basic concept of it. So with RPA, you can automate any repetitive task that a human could do and, and RPA can do it uh, more accurately and, and faster than any human could do. And with this simple promise, if you can document something, you can automate it. RPA has fast grown to be the so fastest growing category of enterprise software. And the, the value of RPA is really enormous. As, as companies are trying to automate uh, processes to remain competitive, which is required to transform digitally, they need to face the realities of, of their complex tech environments. And Often RPA is really the, the simplest and the best way to move forward in this process. And mm -hmm. in our view, RPA should be open source, uh, built and powered by a robust community. And this allows uh, for collaboration and extensibility by developers, partners and customers. It's the same model that has made open source technologies really ubiquitous like Elasticsearch, Databricks and Confluent. Uh, we also uh, know that soon all automations will be run in the cloud and orchestrated over the web. The cloud has really become an enterprise developer domain and as customers move to the cloud, we'll be ready with a robust cloud service. So our cloud can not only uh, allow you to automate local attended bots on local machines, but also uh, our innovation has been to, to enable you to run a massive robot workforce in the cloud as well. And really a key part uh, in, our, in our offering is, is the open source uh, platform that we're building on, really the, the key core uh, element in, in, our, in our work. And this is called Robot Framework. This is the open source project where we are basing all on. And Robot Framework uh, was created more than 10 years ago uh, as a Python based test automation platform. And it has since grown steadily uh, as both uh, an RPA tool set and an automation framework. And, and really the benefit of Robo framework is, is the many extensions and, and keyword additions there are for it, thanks to its uh, active community of contributors. And today a uh, Robo framework is downloaded uh, over 5 million down, uh, times annually, and it has a network of hundreds of thousands of active developers all over the world using it. And so with that uh, as a background, uh, Robocop's view on this massive opportunity in RPA is based on our experience as consultants and practitioners. 
we really think that uh, RPA is uh, fundamentally a developer domain. And so, so we think that when developers build solutions with engineering mindset, they can really build robust automations uh, and not, not brittle bots that, that break and, and cause issues in your business processes. We, we polled hundreds of RPA consultants and, and they really all say the same thing. Current RPA vendors are way too busy squeezing money out of customers and ignoring the needs of the RPA developer. Uh, and after a ton of research, we are really confident that the RPA market will only re reach its fullest potential when software developers can build automation using open source tools. And these software robot developers will be in high demand. And I, I know that many, many people in this webinar today are, are likely already in the software robot development business. And that's why uh, we put the software robot development uh, at the center of our model here. All right, um, so I'm gonna uh, describe a bit like a very high level what our products and tools tools are about. So to help this uh, software robot com uh, developer community succeed, we've focused our products around three pillars, learn, build and run. So to help you learn about the software robots, we're really heavily investing in content, uh, tutorials, examples, articles, so that you can quickly get up to speed. Uh, for building the software robots, we're providing free tools for developers designed with best practice developer workflows to remove any friction from robot development. And for running the, the robots, there's a clear indication uh, in the market that it's moving to cloud and cl uh, hybrid cloud options. And we are currently offering the most advanced cloud options for RPA. So um, let's get you a bit for more familiar with these tools. Um, this is a screenshot from our Robocorp lab. It's an IDE tool that's purpose built for software robot building. Uh, it leverages the robot framework which allows you to use keywords and libraries built just for RPA. They're all open sourced uh, and community created. They, they range from Selenium browser controls to advanced computer vision uh, to custom apps like SAP and the, the list goes on. And you can see um, it's, it's really human readable. And um, our developer tools in general have a really low floor and a high ceiling. So this means that you're able to get started with the tools with just some basic Python scripting capabilities. And at the same time, we're also Python extendable. So you can integrate any existing Python library to, to your robots. Um, all right, so this is gonna be oversimplifying things a bit, but uh, conceptually what we're doing with the lab is that we are writing instructions for our little virtual robots to go and execute. So um, our marketing team likes to use our monkey mascot, Mark. So uh, what's happening with our IDE uh, effectively is that we are creating robot instructions that can then be executed by this, this little worker. So here we go. All right. Uh, just a sec. Okay, yeah, so um, after the robots are programmed, we've built an entire platform called Robocorp Cloud, and that allows you to run your robots virtually, uh, concurrently, and at scale. Uh, you're able to run the robot workforce virtually, so if your process has peak loads, you can spin up multiple concurrent robots. Uh, the pricing is consumption based. You only pay for the time that your robots are working. You don't pay for development time, you just pay for the time that the robots are actually working on cloud. Uh, we've structured the product also around workspaces that help you control the data and robot processing between clients, departments and teams. Um, so that's a high level intro of the tools. Uh, let's have a look at how one of our partners is solving uh, healthcare company invoicing bottleneck. So uh, the folks at Thoughtful Automation documented a 
process where two people were responsible for invoicing. They were spending all their time on repetitive clicks in an enterprise uh, system. And Thoughtful Automation designed a robotic worker that automated 45 clicks in their process. Uh, it covered three different applications and uh, it utilized an API call and eventually then sent the customer an email. Um, and this is really a, a great example of tangible value of RPA. So what Thoughtful Automation is seeing in this process, they saw a 200% capacity increase without any hires. Um, the cost per invoice processing was cut to 87%. And then we have a 90% time reduction on the manual processing of the invoices. So quite impressive. Um, before finding us, Thoughtful Automation had built a version of this robot using a legacy RPA provider. But um, thanks to the developer-friendly controls and accessibility of our platform, they eventually decided to migrate this robot to RoboCorp. And by doing this, uh, they've been able to lower their monthly SaaS price by 25% for their customers. So this is creating quite a lot of long-term goodwill for them. Um, so that's a, that's a really impressive ex, uh, real world example, but let's have a look at what it looks like in practice with a demonstration. Okay, thanks Anna. Uh, so, so I'm gonna show you a live demonstration uh, of a software robot platform. And, and this demo is an uh, attempt to visualize the concept. So I'm using applications that you can see in my local environment, but in practice, you can basically automate anything out there. And so, so in this demo case, uh, I'm, I'm the operations manager of a company called Robospebin Industries. And at Robospebin, we really value our customers and we love hearing their feedback. But since we get a lot of feedback, our, our team collectively spends around 20 hours per week uh, going through our, our, our feedback and, and logging sentiments, updating our CRM and, and following up with customers. So it's really manual and time consuming work and, and we'd love to be able to reinvest that time in, in other projects. So I'm gonna actually share my screen now and uh, show you what our situation at Robospebin looks like. So here, we have our, our Robospebin Industries web form. We can use this to, to send any, any free form, uh, free form uh, feedback. And I'm just gonna put in my name here and, and a message and submit it. And uh, typically this would go into a system where our people would manually process it and, and then record it to a CRM, which at this time happens to be only an Excel file uh, while, while uh, Robocop can process any other CRM system like Salesforce as Spellbin Industries uh, is, hasn't really been able to transform to that kind of modern technology yet. So we're using an Excel file for our CRM. And, um, and in, in this uh, automation case, what we've actually done is that we have this web form and, um, and whenever now somebody fills in new, new data, we actually call a webhook uh, to our cloud robot workforce on Robocop Cloud. And here we launch a robot that goes into a CRM system, uh, checks if we have an entry for the user or the feedback giver. And then we also use a, a cloud-based machine learning model for sentiment analysis. So we can automatically determine uh, whether the feedback was positive, neutral or negative. And then we store everything into this uh, Google Sheet here. And afterwards we can post process, but I'm gonna go, go into that later. So, so now to test this out, we, we have actually another Robocop product, which is called the Robot Assistant uh, that runs locally on my computer and it can access anything that I have on my machine. And here we are actually using an Excel sheet to fill in some test data into this uh, form that we build and automated. So let's start the, uh, the assistant. And what's gonna happen here 
is that my browser is going to open and the assistant is start, starting to fill in some, some uh, responses to, to the web form. And now these responses are kicking up the web hooks and, and that's uh, pushing uh, our cloud robots into work. And here in the cloud, we actually see multiple robots doing their work. So, so what's great about the, the cloud is that these robots are actually running inside containers fully on Robocorp's uh, cloud. So, so robots bear in industries doesn't have to actually own any cloud resources of their own. And we've set a concurrency limit for these robots to five. So we get maximum five robots doing work in parallel but we could just as well send it to 20 if we see that there's gonna be a high, high peak demand. So, so as we, we will go through later in the presentation, our pricing model is, is, is not based on number of bots, it's, it's based on how much work those bots do. So this actually doesn't cost any extra for RoboSpare in industries either. It's just more efficient way to, to process that workload. So we, we see these bots coming and going as they, as they each pick up some work. And, and here we see this Excel, Excel form filling up. And I almost forgot to show you our Slack as well. We have a, a Slack here for, for our customer success people where we see real time answers coming in. So now I think the robots have processed all the answers. They're all here in Google Sheets and we have uh, uh, everything in Slack. So, so now it's time to summarize this. Let's say that uh, we are at the end of the week or end of the day, if you wanna do it like this. So at this time, I'm gonna just launch a process locally, a robot here as an assistant to do the summary, but this could run in the, in the workforce automatically as a sort of a background task. Uh, and what this workload now does is that it'll go through the sheets now it, it, it collected all the feedback and summarized here that, that we had 28 feedbacks, 17 of them were positive. And out of these 28, we had 25 people in our CRM system. And it then moved all, all of these answers to our archive so we can, we can start fresh the next week or the next day. And now at RoboSpareBin, we could uh, use this data to, let's say, send t-shirts to anyone to, that has uh, send, send us a positive feedback and we could just as well automate that. And as you see, where we used to spend tens of hours doing this manually, now this whole process is basically automated uh, with, with Robocop. That, that concludes the demo. All right, hey, thanks Antti. Uh, always, always nice to see the, the demo flowing flowing well, quite a, quite a complicated process, but, but you, you could see quite many different features of the product. Um, if you're interested in, in replicating like the demo yourself or some parts of the demo, we actually have documentation on our doc site, uh, helping you with all the integrations you can see here uh, with the Google Sheets, Excel, the machine learning services from, from Google Cloud and, and so on. All right, um, so Last week, we launched our partner program, and I want to take a moment to recognize our early partners here. They've been super inspiring on, on so many levels. They've been iterating with us on building customer solutions, and they've challenged us to deliver a platform that, that supports a diverse set of use cases. So I'm gonna go really quickly through to, to introduce these guys. So um, Thoughtful Automation, uh, we talked about uh, these guys already a bit. They're focusing uh, on healthcare, financial and legal service automation. Um, MSP, uh, uh, operating from Latin America and Spain, uh, wants to use Robocorp to, to provide automation solutions for small and medium businesses. Uh, CampTech is a US-based RPA SaaS provider. Uh, they're focusing on hosted RPA solutions and bot management. Uh, Nixtech from Denmark focusing on SAP automation for mid-market and enterprise. And finally, Billion building solutions to help with digital transformation and custom automation specifically in India. So a great 
big thanks to to all all these partners uh, all of you've been super uh inspirational for us and the early feedback from from all of all these partners as well as all of the users we have has been really really critical for us um so i'd still like to uh cover uh a bit about the pricing i know it's a it's always one of the topics that excites our users um I really want to stress that Robocorp strongly believes in helping RPA developers create and deliver value. And that's why it's completely free to get started with us. Uh, you can just go on our website and create an account to get started. And when you're ready to upgrade, um, you'll just pay for the robot time that you're using. So there's not going to be any complex licensing schemes or prohibitive limitations and the upgrade can just be done with a with a swipe of a credit card so um you can you can advance pretty pretty easily um all right so um this is uh, i hope that you you've learned a bit more about how we are making rpa more accessible and uh, developer friendly i really encourage you to sign up today start building for free. If you're interested in partnering with us, please reach out. Uh, we'll get back to you uh, shortly. And um, I'm going to open it up for the question and answers at this stage. So um, we're going to start with some of the questions you've submitted during the presentation first. Um, all right, just give me a second. Okay, so here we have one. So. Um, uh, what does the robot builder actually look like? What would it take to build a bot that did what you did in the demo? Okay, um, good question there. Uh, I can actually share my screen. I was able to clean up my demo setup and, and I can now show what the developer tools would look like. So, so here uh, we have Robocop Lab and this is a Jupyter based environment. So based on, on the popular Jupyter Labs uh, concept. And here, this is a customized, customized version of it, which is uh, tailored to RPA use. And here we can see that it integrates to, to Robocop Cloud, for instance, it has a sp specific user interface for finding UI locators and all sorts of things that we are be all, all also bringing in, in the near term. So here, if we see the the first uh, task here that that did the uh, feedback submission uh, on my local machine. So what this does, if you start reading it, it opens a workbook in Excel, and then it opens a browser. Then it reads the uh, reads a worksheet, and then here it enters uh, one random user just to throw it off a bit and then it starts going through the excel row, row uh, one row at a time and and inputting data into the form and this is the top level what it looks like and if you would go down a one level we would see the keywords and these keywords are are then consisting of a kind of more lower level things that the robot can do so so input data into the form would look like input text, input text, submit form, wait until page contains success and with a timeout of 50 seconds. So pretty simple all in all. And, and if we would go one step beyond that, then you would find Python code. But as we see, it's really not necessary to go to that level in order to build an automation, but it's an opportunity as well, an option to do that if you wanna do it. Right. I'm actually going to follow up with a question from Oliver. So um, any recommendations for people who are new to RPA and feel a little intimidated by the platform? Yeah, uh, we have really good beginners courses. So, so they, they will take you step by step through, through building the first part, uh, intermediate and advanced topics. And you don't really need to uh, learn Python in order to be, be able to start with it. It's, you can really start with Robo Framework itself. And Robo Framework is great because it has that 
low barrier to entry, but then it has really high ceiling for growth. So it doesn't limit you, but instead gives you a lot of expression power to build. So don't be intimidated by the, the beginning and, and, and start building. And also if you wanna uh, join either the Robo Framework community or RoboCorp community, you're gonna be able to find a lot of like-minded people who are in the same stage and learning together. Yeah, cool, thanks. Um, another one here, um, loads of good questions. So um, how good open source RPA is when it comes to OCR? Yeah, I'd say I'd say uh, when it comes to OCR, we we are standing on the shoulders of giants. So so we we tend to usually leverage uh, uh, services from some companies like Amazon or or Google from Cloud Vision API or TextTrack, for instance. So so we do obviously we we can in in Robo Framework we can do anything that you could do with Python. So you can you can have a local model. To, to perform that OCR capability. Some people prefer that, so you don't need to get that network hit. But, but oftentimes it's, it's much easier to just use some readily available service like TextTract, for instance, uh, to, to do it in the cloud. And for that, we actually have ex examples on, on our documentation that, that will lead you through how to do that. Yeah, um, there's going to be a few roadmap questions. We'll get to those as well. Um, I'm going to take a few of these more detailed ones. So what about SAP integration and partnership? So I guess SAP integration. Is yeah, right yeah, we do have SAP libraries uh, with Robo, Robo Framework. They, they've been developed by the community and we've been seeing them in action and, and, and working pretty well. Um, no specific partnership with with SAP hasn't been requ a requirement yet. Uh, if if that comes up, I'm obviously open to it. Uh, that's really the power of the community. I I know personally that this SAP library that everyone is using has been built by, I think I don't I don't want to say, but I think it was a Dutch uh, SAP uh, expert who has worked in 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 SAP be consulting for years so he really knows what he's doing and he basically built it for himself but then open source it and everyone else is using it as well cool yeah i guess that's that's kind of the the advantage of the open source community here that a lot of the a lot of the kind of libraries or, or features that that haven't uh, haven't yet been built uh you can use you, you can use what others have built already and, and get going really fast. Um, this is an interesting one. I want to take it. So um, why do you think your language-centered approach, which we saw at step one, is better than the visual approaches of concurrent uh, products where I can design my automation workflow with a recorder and visual? Okay, there's many, many things here to unpack. And unpack. So, so um, uh, firstly, uh, uh, we, we've been working with, with language-based systems for, for decades and decades. Uh, software developers all around the world are working with text-based code every day. And, and because of that, we tend to have really good tooling for, for text-based stuff. So, so we're going to have things like version control and, and really good processes on how they work with that. A really good tooling, really good develop development uh, suites, and, and all, all sorts of things. So, so our our idea in the beginning was was that, you know, why obscure that? Like, why why would we want to hide the the main thing that you're really developing from the developer with with a visual layer, and and also with a bit of a history lesson here. I've I've actually seen in 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 many developer domains before. Uh, attempts to introduce a visual programming paradigm, and they never really catch on too much. So, so I'm 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 a skeptic. Uh, if the market shows that that's really the superior way, I know that people have been already doing tests with Robo Framework to build a visual layer on top of it, but none of those have really catched up. So, so kind of the the summary would be that that we see that that the, the complexity require, required in RPA solutions is, is better expressed with, with code than a visual diagram. 
and that, that doesn't uh, exclude that you couldn't uh, generate a visual diagram out of the code itself. That's a possibility as well, but, but I, I'm a skeptic that the best way to build code would be with a visual diagram. Yeah, and, and I could maybe add that there are, like on top of Robo Framework, there are, are these open source projects where you have a, a recorder which turns it into a robot framework code. And I think that's, uh, like to me at least, that's like a great opportunity to use as a learning, like learn how the robot code works if you're new to it to kind of get a, a bit of an understanding of how, how it works. But yeah. uh, it's something that, of course, you can try if, if you're if you're interested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, recorders are a second topic in a, in a sense. They are really not tied to the visual programming yeah. paradigm, but they are a thing of its own. And, and record and playback, if you if you go and talk with test automation veterans, they, they don't even want to start that discussion because they, they know that how, how brittle the, the end result will be. So if you record something uh, with, let's say, absolute locators and try to replay it, it's going to break in a while. So so that's that's really the the reason why why people tend to shy uh, shy away from recorders. Now I don't say that they are all bad. Uh, recorders can be a really powerful tool to capture something really fast, but then you need to have a developer go through it and and make sure that it's it's going to be robust in the end. Yeah, um, I'm going to take a few of the roadmap questions that uh, that I can find here. So um, at least there is a question on, um, I noticed the solution with updating work items to the Excel doc within the Google Cloud. Are there any plans to integrate a work queue into Robocorp Cloud? Short answer, yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, it's coming really, really shortly. Developers are working on it as we speak. Yeah, exactly. Um, and all right, let's see what else here. Um, so uh, in your list of use cases, you had mentioned about the accounts payable process and the invoicing process. We have something similar coming up for a customer. Is that something that I can reuse and customize it for our own customer as a POC? Oh, this is a great question. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. You you want to take it? Go ahead. Um sure. Yeah, so um absolutely I mean first of all we have documentation and instructions on 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 creating the 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 interfa interfaces and and basic, basically the robot code for yourself. Um we're also working at the moment and this goes a bit into the roadmaps as well. Uh what for for a way to actually share some of the robot code more effectively and if, if you have these cases we can kind of just post them on our on our site and, and share through github for example so um so uh, absolutely i mean i think all of this is is kind of very easily uh, repeatable mm, yeah but oftentimes I, I found that that when you go to business specific processes the, the reusability will will go down a bit, but but I, I think I've answered a, a question on or commented on on LinkedIn today. Just exactly the same thing. Like I, I, we we started seeing companies doing repeatable, uh, robust business processes that they offer as a SaaS service. So so they offer it per transaction or something similar where they can maintain it and, and do those slight customizations and tweaks that the customer needs. And then that's the kind of model for re reusability. But then you have another model for reusability, which is for developers. So the need to see example code have working robots that you can test and, and modify yourself and, and learn from that. That need we are addressing with, with uh, shortly with a way to actually share and, 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 and try out other developers' robots that are uh, released as open source code. Yeah, cool. cool. So um, one question, which I know Antti you like, so is Robocorp Cloud available uh, as a product to be installed on a private cloud? Okay, so um, 
so Robocop Cloud is is right now um, a pub, public cloud multi-tenant system. So so you really can uh, take it and and install it to your your own cloud account as such. So so the model is that is basically consumption based uh, pricing. So we host this uh, hugely scalable system that anyone can use. Just log in create credentials and start using we actually have a free tier so you can test it out test basically any everything out without actually having to even pay and then you when you feel comfortable with it you can you can upgrade to a paid tier and get more usage out of it um so but also we we understand the need for for private cloud uh setups and this is something that we are exploring on our enterprise offering side actively right now. So if you have something in mind, just reach out to us and we, we can have a chat. All right. So uh, then another one on cloud. So is Robocorp cloud man? Oh, sorry. There are questions keep coming, coming up so quickly that I lost it here. Is Robocorp cloud mandatory for developing and deploying robots using Robocorp? So can non-Robocorp robots and assistants be managed by Robocorp Cloud? So I think there's two things here. So, so uh, you, don't, you don't need to use Robocorp Cloud to develop uh, robots. You, you can just use Robocorp Lab to build. We, by the way, support also Visual Studio Code uh, through an extension. So you can, you can use that as well to develop uh, robots with, with Robo Framework and, uh, and the libraries that we provide. So, so you don't need to use the, uh, use the cloud uh, for that. And you can, you can run them manually, locally. And also, we will, be, we will be soon publishing actually instructions how to do uh, orchestration with 100% open source uh, tooling. It's a bit more involved, but you can still do it. So definitely building an open source RPA is, is not, you don't need to be only in our ecosystem to make that happen, but certainly we, we do our best to make it so that our ecosystem would be the easiest way to approach it. All right, um, let's take still a few more. Um, so let's let's try this one. So using only scripting approach without visual developer tool like computer vision, for example, would you share a little bit on your approach to manage UI and desktop automation and overcome virtual environment like Citrix? Yeah. So so with scripting, you can actually use Citrix and 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 visual uh, user interfaces. So that doesn't exclude it out. And we will be soon rolling out tools in the lab that allow you to take snippets of, of, of UIs and, and say that click this image, click so and so many pixels uh, from to the right of this, this image, capture text and, and, and so on. So we do provide those same primitives and also kind of your, your, your typical Windows application uh, access and, and, and all of that. So, so they are there still, even though you don't develop uh, the, the robot with, with a visual tool itself, uh, but you, you can still do visual automation for sure. Um, all right, so open source orchestration that was mentioned, which will, uh, which will allow us to run RPA completely self-hosted and open source based. Is there a timeline for this or is it already available? Um, yeah, so, <clears throat> so when we first started exploring uh, open source RPA, uh, it was 2018, early in the year, and 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 we 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 wanted to see if Robo Framework would be fit for the job. So so we developed, and this is this is in the open source community way before Robocop. We developed Robo Framework so that it could be actually used in in RPA. The syntax would be fit for it, and, and so forth. And then we uh, uh, remodeled continuous integration tooling like Jenkins to be able to orchestrate that. And, and we actually, uh, inside of our consultancy, we, we, we deployed it to, to numerous customers and enterprises and, and it worked. It was, a, it was a ton of work to be, make it happen. So that's why we wanted to make it really easy and compelling for anyone to start building with open source tools and created Robocop to make it happen. And so, so that's that has been available for 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 many years, and I know uh, many companies uh, are, are using that as well internally. They have people who are experts in in let's say Jenkins, and they set it up and maintain and host it themselves. 
So definitely that's that's doable right now. But I, I just referred that we're gonna actually post instructions on it because because many many people have, wanna wanna build the whole stack themselves and wanna have that experience to to be able to prove that they they can be truly autonomous and 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 truly open source. Thanks, Antti. Um, um, good questions keep pouring in, so <laughs> we'll we'll take a few more here. Um, so. This is kind of a follow up, I think, on what we covered already, but I, I think it's worth maybe exploring a bit more because it's getting a lot of questions. So as far as I understand you correctly, you focus on classic language oriented developers for your for your approach. Is RPA not prim primarily designed for business users without a technical background to automate their business processes without a technical developer? So this goes to the citizen developer. Yeah. Question. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a favorite one, as well. Um, yeah, I mean, in the RPA industry, there has been a lot of debate about the the vision of of citizen developers, and and fundamentally, uh, there are two camps. Uh, one camp is is the, the the believers in in that everyone should be able to automate everything, and then there are the, the camp that that say that okay, when you do robust proper business process automation you need to have certain um a certain level of 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 sort of skill that's required and um the way uh we've been approaching is uh, we we went to the market and and observed what was happening in the rpa space early on and and went around and met, met with dozens and dozens of rpa developers dozens and dozens of of, of companies using it and deploying rpa and each and every time we saw that you you would have a dedicated RPA developer who was building these solutions. Uh, I've actually never seen a case where, where citizen uh, developers would have successfully deployed RPA in mass scale. Um, and that, when you think about it, when you are, let's say, an accountant, highly skilled accountant, what well, uh, your your skill set is not geared towards building automation, uh, and and know your time should be spent towards building automation or maintaining that automation when it breaks. If you if you develop a piece of automation that's going to be business critical, you want to have a team inside your company to maintain it. So 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 kind of working yourself through that the kind of how you would deploy RPA in in in, in larger scale, it just makes sense to to focus uh, focus your effort on on having actually dedicated software robot developers owning that domain yeah I, I think that's a that's a really valid valid point and and when you have the dedicated software robot developers first of all building more robust robots they will take a lot less time to maintain because with any code uh, that anybody builds there will be a lot of a lot of maintenance related to it and if you have someone build a uh, a bot that are not used to the, that are, that don't do automation for their kind of living, then then you will see will, you will see that it's not going to be as as robust. And also, you're gonna get a huge pushback from IT, yeah, because you're building this sort of shadow IT infrastructure at the same time, which kind of goes against you your typical uh, traditional RPA buyer being the the IT actually the executives from the IT so. So that that's why I have found found the kind of the whole uh, story of of citizen developers pretty uh, pretty strange in a way. Um, all right. Um, another question: How about IT security, especially when you are running from public cloud? Good one. So so uh, we have few principles of of design. Uh, but security is only always the number one principle that we we go by, and uh, and so so if you if you have some some uh, let's say you're handling data that you simply for for let's say a regulatory reason cannot have live in 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 any public cloud service whatsoever, you can actually as a developer uh, create the robot so that it doesn't post that data into the cloud orchestration because the cloud orchestration can be used only to orchestrate your robots and your robots can live inside your own 
machines if you want to have it. So, so it's, it's really not a requirement that you run everything in the cloud, but that you orchestrate from the cloud. And by orchestrating from the cloud, you can, you can do really great things like use our APIs to access the orchestrator or your robots or your, your, your work items or, or what have you. And then also integrate with with a lot of uh, outside services, like you saw in in the in the demo. We we use simple simple webhook to connect to our cloud workforce. So so the cloud really, and also not to mention the scalability, the the attractive pricing, and all that. So the cloud really brings a lot of benefits, but you can still balance it with security by controlling where you store your own business data and. And we have white papers on security models that we deploy. So, so really security has been the number one design principle. And I, I think we have a few patterns around it as well uh, and under work. So, so that's, that's some, some uh, space that we want to be innovators on as well. Cool. Um, a short question. Can I develop in my machine and run in another machine as it runs from cloud? Yes, yes. Ab absolutely. <laughs> Uh, you you can install Robocop app uh, uh, to any any machine, log in uh, with with your user credentials. So you let's say you have a friend that you want to give a robot to. Uh, you you both create a Robocop cloud account and sign up in the same workspace. Then you can actually deploy your robot that you develop on your machine to the cloud, and grant access to your friend, and they they will see it in the app and be able to run it. Or, or then you can, if you, if it's a workforce process, you can orchestrate it to run on the machine. So definitely, really core cool capabilities. Yeah, and I think it is a great advantage to be able to do that, and and it goes again uh, to show that that how much more effective uh, a developer approach can be in terms of scaling the robots in in your organization, for example. Yeah, I I can tell a short story here. So so when when we were just starting up with robot framework based RPA. Uh, I, I was I was as a working as a as a software engineer as a, and as a consult consultant and I had to uh, every week I had to book my uh, hours into into NetSuite and I just felt that that was waste of my time. So I automated it with Robo Framework. And so so when I was running that automation one day some people from our, our sales team saw it uh, on my laptop running and they got really excited about what they were seeing and they, they came in and I want to have that. I, how can I get that? And could we at the same time automate some, some things that in our CRM and, and, and so forth and so forth. So back then it was a few years ago, I didn't have Robocop cloud, so I just couldn't give it to them. But if I would have, have had that at the time, I could have just say, sure, uh, you know, what's your user user account on, on cloud? I can act, grant you access. And these guys would have been able to run it in, in seconds on, on their own computer. So that's really the power of the cloud. You can you can distribute it really easily and, and we would have not even needed any, any infrastructure uh, on our side as well. Cool. Um, I'm really trying to get the last questions, but there are so many good ones. Um, I'm going to combine a few. So there's a few questions on um, how do you get at, uh, attribute or selectors uh, for UI automation? So does your tool provide some sort of functionality to do it? Yeah. So so we have um, this kind of uh, UI uh, UI for for locators in in the lab which you can use, uh, we are con constantly improving that the functionality of that. So which you can use it for Windows or browser things right now. And and then we'll bring in uh, image-based workflows as well there. And and then obviously you can you can use, uh, you know, any, any locator finding tool that you would find in Windows, for instance, that comes with the operating system. But definitely we, we, we try to provide everything that you need in the lab and, and that's gonna be improving constantly. Cool. Um, so any recommendations for people coming from Blue Prism or UI Path? Yeah, I think I think my recommendation is 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 really to learn uh, learn op open source RPA, RPA and, and kind of um, develop your skills in that area because because that will allow you to to use that skill 
to so many different uh, domains as well. So essentially, when you're, you're learning open source RPA through Robocop with, with Python based tooling, you're actually in the process learning uh, uh, skills that you can translate to other areas. When you're using, uh, when you're learning, let's say, a proprietary RPA tool, you're just learning that piece. And it's a big bet in your career that that, that technology is going to stay relevant for the coming years. But in the open source space, that's, that's really not the case. So, so um, that's one recommendation. Second recommendation is going through the, the, uh, the, the basic uh, beginners courses and also signing up on our, on our developer Slack as well to have a chat with, with others. Okay, so um, I think last one that, uh, that we'll have. So what vision do you have for Robocorp and this tool in the coming year? It's a big one. <laughs> Coming year, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I wish I could uh, predict the future, uh, but but for the coming year, we we are definitely focusing now that we we have our first commercial offerings. Out, we are focusing on on improving those, uh, bringing new features uh, every every month, every every few weeks to the to the platform, either on the developer tools or on the cloud, and and really getting getting to a stage where where, where we we can uh, compete or oh, we we already feature feature by feature can compete with with many of the tools out there but we we want to be there in in credibility wise also to compete in the in the enterprise larger enterprise scales and and i say that the within the year we can already be there where we where we can start um, start winning all the cases that would have still today been been won over by some of the three large incumbents yeah i think that's a that's a great answer and and we're gonna have some pretty like in a shorter time frame than a year uh within even next few weeks we're gonna have some pretty exciting exciting new features that we're gonna bring on to beta so um we're gonna have for example an uh assistant assistant robot to, to help with some of the attended cases. So we're pretty excited about all the, all the new stuff that, that we keep on pushing out and, and it's gonna be exciting to see where it goes. Um, hey, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank everybody. This has been like, we've gotten so many, so many good questions. Um, um, tried to answer at least most of them. Um, we're happy to continue the discussion on on our uh, Slack, which you can join once you create an account or, or on our forums. Um, and uh, we're gonna be sharing these materials and the recording of the webinar, I think, uh, with you uh, afterwards. So um, thanks everybody for joining. It's been uh, really, really nice talking with all of you. Yeah, thank you on, on my behalf as well. Really great questions. I, I, I'm happily surprised that we got so many awesome, awesome questions coming up. And if you have anything more, also we have a forum where, we, where you can post questions in, in the future and, and our, our team is gonna be monitoring those. So thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye.